All right, in today's video, we're going to take a look at S&P futures, and we're going to talk about um, the way that you make money with my work, which is, again, setup plus trigger equals trade entry, and then you manage it. So in this example of S&P futures, we're looking at a 120-minute chart, and I'm going to show you where there was a setup this morning, and then we're going to talk about the next decisions. So we had um, support that included symmetrical projections that came in, at 2758 and three quarters to 2761 and a half. Now, as far as the trigger, where's that? Well, let's say that you're using a 15 minute chart for a trigger chart so that you can, you know, look at a swing trade against the area. It's uh, definitely the more aggressive swing trade trigger chart. So that triggered when we both took out this prior swing high, and then you also had the 834 EMA crossover to the upside. So at that point, you wanted to start taking your buy entries in the S&P with your max risk underneath this last low, okay, if that's the time frame that you're trading. And let's see, what do we have after that? Well, we have the next decision. So if this support decision is more important in the bigger picture, I do have a target that comes in up at the 2805 area. But what we need to watch on the way up and manage against is the, res the symmetry resistance that's in the way, potentially, of a continuation of the move off of this low. And that comes in from taking these prior rally swings. This is 21 and 3 quarter points. This one is 22 points. And then I have to actually label this one again to see where we're at. Okay, and so far we are 18 and three quarter points off of this last low, so a couple points higher is where that symmetry resistance comes in. It also just happens to overlap an extension of this prior swing. So 1618 extension is in there. There's a 786 retracement of a smaller swing. There's a 618 retracement of another swing. Bottom line, this is where you have to look at managing the trade because if we cannot clear this resistance, then you have to realize that we're in the position for another possible failure because the last time that you rallied that much, you saw this decline and you saw this decline. So let's see, you know, if it can push through this resistance, then great. Then it looks good for this potential upside target. But on a failure to do so, I know that there are some of my traders that are going to look at a short against it with the risk definition just above this zone. And um, yeah, you just have to take it from one decision to the next. We don't always make the targets that we're shooting for. And uh, you know, you don't want to keep your original stop underneath here because there's no reason to lose money on this trade after we've rallied this much off of the cluster.